if you come up at the break, Charlie and I will have taken all the pieces out of here that we like best, <laughs> and you will be you will get the rest. <laughs> No. Charlie, do you have anything to add to that? She wants to know what you think about PetroChina. <laughs> it's funny. I saw her out there in the uh, in the shopping area, and I, I knew that she had PetroChina on her mind. Uh, we bought PetroChina a few years ago. <clears throat> Again, after reading the annual report. And fortunately, it was in English. Um, it was the first stock, Chinese stock, <clears throat> and really the last. I mean, it, w it won't necessarily be the last, but I mean, it's the only one that we've owned so far. We put about four hundred million dollars into it at the time, um, and still, it produces about three percent of the world's oil, which is a lot of oil. It produces probably eighty percent or so as much as Exxon Mobil will produce. And it's a huge company. Last year, it earned $12 billion. Now, if you look at the Fortune 500 list, <clears throat> my guess is you won't find more than about five companies in the United States that earn <clears throat> $12 billion or more. So it's a, it's, it's a major company. At the time we bought it, the total market value was $35 billion. So we bought it at about three times what it earned last year. It does not have unusual amounts of leverage. Uh, it, it, uh, in the annual report, they say something which very, very few companies do say, but which I think is actually fairly important. They say they will pay out about 45% of the amount they earn. Uh, so if you can buy it at three times earnings, what turn out to be three times earnings, and you get 45% of 33%, you know, you're getting a 15% yield on your cash yield on your investment. It's a very good annual report. Chinese government owns 90% of the company. We own 1.3%. If we vote with them, the two of us control the business. And it, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's a thought that hasn't occurred to them, but I'll keep pointing it out. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's a very major business at a very, very attractive, or at what was a very attractive price. Unfortunately, uh, the government's shares and our shares have the same economic interest, but they are classified differently so that the government's 90% are called one thing and the 10% with the public are called eight shares. And we have to report in Hong Kong when we own 10% of a company, or we did then, 10% uh, of a company's shares. So unfortunately, the 10% applied only to the 10% of eight shares. And so we had to reveal our ownership when we only had 1% of the economic interest in the, in the company. So we would have bought more, uh, but the price jumped up. And, and uh, we are happy to have our 1.3% or whatever it is. And we think that they've done uh, a good job in running the business. They've, they've got large gas reserves, which they're starting to develop now. But it's a very major enterprise. It employs almost 500,000 people. Uh, and the interesting thing was, a few years ago, relatively few people in the investment world probably even thought about the fact that PetroChina was over there and was a much larger business than most of the, well, just about any oil company in the world, except for BP and ExxonMobil. Charlie, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, it would be nice if this sort of thing happened all the time, but that hasn't been true in recent years. But we never, I should emphasize, I mean, the annual report of PetroChina, which, like I say, is, it's easy to read, understandable, they declare their policies. Anybody could get it. You can read it. We did not, we did not go over and we never had any contact with the management before we bought the stock. We never attended an investment, investor presentation or anything of the sort. I mean, it's, it's right there in black and white in a report that anybody can get. And we just sit in the office and, and read those things. And we were able to put 400 million out that's now worth about a billion, two or something like that. Um, it was interesting at the time, I think I'm right on this, at the time, Yukos, which is the big oil company in Russia, uh, was probably far better known among the investment community in the United States than, than PetroChina. And I compared the two at the time, thought to myself, would I rather have the money in Russia or have it in China? 
PetroChina, in my view, was far cheaper, and I felt that the, uh, the economic climate was likely to be better in China. You know, would I have, if it had been selling at the same multiple as a U.S. domestic company, would I have regarded it as more attractive? No. I mean, there's some disadvantages always to being in a culture that you don't perfectly understand or where tax laws can change, your ownership rules can change. But the discount at which PetroChina was selling compared to other international oil companies was, was in my view at the time, ridiculous. So, so that's why we bought it. And we will have the candy available for you at 